Oh, Taylor McCurdy. We're we going to start this now. So the banter never ends with Taylor and Byron. It's quite funny. Yesterday I was with Byron. We had lunch together and it was a, quite an entertaining lunch, wasn't it, Seb? Yes. Seb also joined us as well. And we missed Taylor and we sent Taylor a few voice notes and the banter just never stops between them all. So we'll just have to think of things that we can talk about with Taylor. I will tell you one thing though, Taylor. As per normal, Byron has left our cars dirty, which will definitely make Taylor smile because she knows that every time when she comes back from leave, the cars are normally clean. I make sure that I wash them for her and she does the same for me. But with Byron, he likes to leave them dusty for us. So it's quite funny that she always t gives Byron a hard time. As you can see, Hosanna is still very sleepy at the moment. He's really not too interested in what's going on. I would imagine that both of these leopards are going to come to this area around sunset. Both of them should start moving up towards this tree and start getting into feeding mode. Hosanna is so full. I would imagine that he's going to kind of not take any chances in feeding in this heat. He'll rather go up when it gets cooler. The interesting thing is going to be to see if Tandi gets a chance because Tandi's dragged that kill all the way and put it up in this tree. Now, she can't get to that carcass without having to first come towards Hosanna. And the in interaction between those two is going to be absolutely fascinating because while she can be very aggressive towards Shongile, as we've seen in, in the past, and she's chased Shongile away with Hosanna, it's the same size leopard. Hosanna is probably actually a bit bigger and bulkier than what Tandi is already, and he's not going to back down for food. And it's going to be interesting to see whether her older more experienced kind of or her level of experience comes through and is able then to keep Hosanna away from this carcass or if Hosanna is just going to keep Tandi away and Tandi is going to end up sitting like she would if it was a dominant male if there was Tingana was here Tandi would have no chance at getting anywhere near this particular carcass so it's going to be interesting to see who actually gets to feed off what it's Definitely the Steenbok has not been fed on at all, so there's still a lot of meat in that Steenbok. You can see Hassan is kind of looking at the Steenbok that's much fresher meat. I would imagine when he does go up, that's where he's going to go and eat. The problem is where that carcass is, is not very friendly at all in terms of our cameras. Seb, you're going to have a tough time up in there. It's right up against the light, so hopefully if he does feed off that, he'll bring it down into a better spot. But isn't this wonderful? What a way to come back to work. It doesn't get any better than this. Mr. P, you're commenting on just how heavy he's breathing. Well, Mr. P, his rate of breathing is very heavy, and it's exactly like Tandi. You're going to see both of them breathing heavily, and it's because of the warm weather that we're having. Remember, it's been a fast change from the cooler, colder temperatures. Before I went on leave, I was wearing a jersey in the afternoons, whereas now there's not even a chance that we could wear that. So that, coupled with the fact that he's in distended stomach and he's full he's pushing up in his lungs it's causing a shorter breath to be taken as well as him being hot he's trying to pant and just cool himself down so he's going to be very heavy breathing but it's interesting to see just how much he's kind of growing every time i see hosana he seems to be just adding on a few sort of extra kilos and while he might not be massive in terms of his height yet or even his head size he's definitely starting to bulk up and his shoulders are getting bigger he's starting to get a lot more muscular around the legs and shoulder area so it's really interesting just to see his development and i'm so glad that he's making kills around juma it means that we should see a lot more of him over the next little bit i wonder if tingana has been seen much do you see much while i was away seb not much a couple of times well, there's a couple of times more than what we saw him the when I was here last cycle, I didn't see Tingana at all, really, in the last three-week cycle that I did. So it'll be interesting to see how Tingana starts to take Hosanna. The more he bulks up and the bigger he gets, and the more he has carcasses like this, the more likely Tingana is to start pushing him and chasing him into other areas. But hopefully Hosanna will be clever enough to just sneak around and keep these places for himself and just kind of be like Mvula in a way and move around as Tingana moves and move into a section where he isn't and utilize that area to try and stay clear. I'm surprised though because if he's had this carcass for two days, if, if Tingana comes past, which he often does in this area, and um, will probably then chase Hosanna away. So I wonder if we're now with this other kill being here, if maybe Tingana might arrive at some point. Imagine if we get a third leopard this afternoon, that would just be ridiculous, but not uncommon, as we know. Now, James, you wonder if Hosanna stole the kill from Tandi, and that's why the carcass is in the same tree. Well, James, was, I saw where the carcass was, so the carcass was dragged from where Tandi, where we saw her earlier, and then it was dragged along the road, and the tracks that were dragging it 
was for Tandi, so it wasn't for Hosanna, dragging it straight towards this tree. So what might have happened is she might have wanted to come towards this tree and then maybe Hosanna saw her and has grabbed it and taken it up. It's possible. The other thing is there's really not too many other nice trees in this particular area to hang a carcass. So she might have hung it next to me. There's another tree, but it's really kind of adjacent to the one that we see here. But maybe Hosanna grabbed it at some point and took it up into this area. Um, it's possible. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. The thing is, though, I would have expected Tandi to give a lot more of a fight to her to keep her carcass than to just let Hosanna take it from her. But interesting either way. And like I say, as the sun starts to set and the evening starts to kind of close in, it's going to be very, very interesting to and intriguing to watch these two leopards and how they actually approach one another. Normally with big male leopards, like I say, Tandi wouldn't really worry. She might come closer and look and chuff a little bit and try and kind of work her way into the tree without the male getting too upset. But with Hosanna, if she's brave enough and, and, and strong enough and, and hisses and growls and charges at him, you might find that because of his inexperience, he might run and that will allow her to get up and feed. But most certainly, if you look at the size of his belly and you look at hers, she's had not very much at all to be able to feed on. It's been pretty much him eating everything so far, so it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not she just abandons this or she decides to try and fight him off of the carcass. Now we've had far too many fighting of leopards lately, so hopefully that doesn't happen. So Mr. P, you were wondering, um, he was 13 months when he was left alone by Karula, uh, or unfortunately was basically orphaned by Karula, and, and is this normal time for leopards to be left on their own? Uh, Mr. P, no. So, well, no is not really the right answer. It, it's possible. So most of the time, m leopards will generally stay with their, their mothers for a little bit longer than that, normally up towards two years. So they say generally between 14 months and two years. So I suppose it's not too far away. But given that she was, you know, still looking after them so much, I think that process was still going to take quite a while. So I would have imagined that it would have been closer towards the two-year side than the one-year side that happened to him. There has been leopards that have left their cubs at 10 months and, and have those cubs have survived. But generally, the, the mothers will keep them for a while. And, and, and particularly males like Osana, they tend to latch onto their mothers for a lot longer than the females. You'll often find male um, offspring staying with the females for longer periods. I, I saw when I was at Sinkita, we had Ravens Court female, and at one point she had um, a, a male called Chinzele, and then she had two younger males. And the two younger males were already a year old, and Chinzele, who was now almost three and a half, was still actually with his mother, and she was looking after both the older male and the two younger ones, which is completely unusual and not something you would hear of. And the four of them used to walk around together. It was really quite strange to see. But the males tend to try and latch onto mom for longer. It's easier. Remember that they, they, as soon as they go off on their own, they then deem to be a threat by other males and are pushed around and have to be nomadic. So if they can stay with mom as much as possible and be fed and grow and get bigger, it's only going to mean better things for them as they become older and try and then start moving up in the world and get a territory of their own. So it was probably a bit early for Hosanna, but as you can see, he's doing just fine. He's really kind of figuring it out. He's, he's managing to pull down quite large antelope in the form of these impalas that you see here. And his condition is fantastic. And you know, we're, we're six months down the line now, and he is in no way looked as though he struggled from day one. So he just goes to show that leopards are, are very resourceful creatures and they will survive off anything if they have to. We know that he used to hunt monitor lizards and terrapins as it started and he's graduated now into these antelopes. And now that he's kill killing antelopes like this, you're gonna find a situation that he's really should be well set to carry on with life and, and should be able to find his way. His, his biggest challenge now obviously is to find a territory and, and to not only find a territory, but to be able to dominate it and keep others at bay. And that's going to be, you know, very difficult considering the density of male leopards within this northern section. He's been aided somewhat by the current sort of bad luck that we've had with the Sabi Sands leopards of late, where there's been a number of males to the south of him that have succumbed for various reasons. And that's almost opened up an opportunity for Hosanna in a way. We know that his older brother in the form of Konuma has moved into some of those areas where male leopards have been killed by lions or have are no longer alive and he's forged a territory of his own so I wonder if Hosanna is going to follow a similar pattern and shift in that southward direction towards those areas. It's going to be interesting to see. I think Tingana is still fit and healthy enough that Hosanna 
doubt is going to get this particular section just yet but you never know Hoswana I mean Singana is getting older as is Mbula and both of those males theoretically are, are around the 12 year mark and that's quite old for a male leopard and so you'll find that they'll reach you know 12 13 14 and maybe disappear so it might actually be perfect timing for Hosanna to actually move into this area and take over now we're going to sit with Hosanna but let's while we do that go across to Scott in the Mara who's gazing upon not an impala but a little Thompson's gazelle 